Mm, salutations YouTube. So, as I mentioned in the previous video, I hate to admit that I am a owner of four different 40 S and W's now. Um, I'll do this as number two, uh, just because. Again, I'm not going to show anything that would be considered constructive gun, but I ordered these sights. I sure hope they fit. Let's go ahead. I'll take them off the package or out the package here. But so I got this gun really cheap. Um, if you don't know about it, it takes down just like a Glock. It's the Smith & Wesson SD 40 VE value edition. Oh, it came with a 13 round. For some reason, it had a 9 round restricted bag. Well, whatever. So we're at standard capacity. There you go, YouTube. There you go. So for all your stupid rules. Um, so trigger is very heavy. Reset. Way all the way, almost all the way out. Trigger on it is dog shit. You know, but whatever. Um, pawn shop pickup, it was used. Um, if you know Glocks, it takes down just like a Glock for cleaning. For cleaning YouTube, not for work. Um, for working on. Oh, shit. So, and I mean, there it is. I mean, that's literally... <laughs> so much Glock I mean phew. sorry but then there you go there's that big old as a friend of mine said 40 slow and weak which uh, there's some 10 slow and weeks out there that's what I'm gonna counter with so um, I did shoot this one already and fucking just sorry about my language accuracy was just awful I mean, complete dog shit. It was uh, way down in the dirt. And um, if you know anything about these guns, if you look here, you can tell a lot about them by the barrel lock up here on the slide. Um, from the way, from my perception, this thing is shooting low and right. Um, maybe just a hair right, but way low. Uh, lock up is. You know, also another thing to check when you're checking a gun is see how tight the barrel lockup is to the slide. If it locks up nice and good, then it's a, you know, it'll hit the same spot over and over again. You can use Kentucky Swag, Scientific Wild Ass Guess is what I abbreviated as. If you're hitting, you know, six inches low and two inches right, you can, you know, adjust for it. Um, but this one was very highly irregular and you know I mean I got a good enough deal on it that uh, I feel like it was worth it to order what supposedly a set of sights I think now it says these are Smith & Wesson M&P sight set adjustable so I'm gonna find out do these and again to follow YouTube guidelines. I won't do it during the video. We'll do it off camera. But these are the um, let's see, handgun sights, blah blah blah. High vis, back panel. These are the SWMPE21. And these are elevation, which is what I was telling you about the barrel here. I'm going to probably need to elevate the sight adjustment. Um, but I'll put these on off camera and show you the finished product in the next video and let you know how it how it shoots. And maybe we'll even do a shooting portion on the back back side of this video. So sticking with YouTube guidelines, here's the sights that were on the gun. Um, by the way, you need this is a front sight pusher. This is a rear sight pusher. Um, You'll need these tools if you're going to do this kind of stuff. But I'm not showing how to do it because the sights are off. There you go, YouTube. The sights are already off. There's no... Not manufacturing or showing anybody how to manufacture anything. It's just... Now we're going to put these sights on. 
and from what I'm seeing it looks like these do fit um, the SWMPE 21 height adjustable rears and then this front sight um, please check Hi-Viz uh, they have videos on YouTube about this a uh, little quick insert story I was doing a 226 high-vis front post sight and I used the front sight pusher and I bent the shit out of it um, there is a special way to do this I'm not going to show you how to do it on my channel high-vis has it up it involves some lubrication for the front some sandpaper on the bottom until it's about a third of the way in then tap it the rest of the way in and then the rears I should be able to get away with this sight pusher but as tight as this is I think I'm gonna give it a little bottom sanding and get it a little more on before I start you know cranking on it with the sight pusher so but next video I'll show it with the sights on and then we'll shoot it or the next portion so now I can confirm that yes the Smith & Wesson SD40VE uh, does use these sights from Hi-Viz SWMPE21 um, if you go to Hi-Viz they got a more detailed about how to do this but you use sandpaper for the bottom of the front sight until you can get it about a third to half of the way in with hand pressure and then you use a tap I actually used uh, now they recommend a plastic I have brass so I used a brass punch and you can see I slipped once and it scraped it but whatever uh, right there you can see the little brass mark but anyway uh, once you get these centered now we got to go shoot it next but the method hive is and I did speak with hi -Viz at in in Ram this year um, because of the 226 where I screwed up the front sight and they sent one out I made a point to stop and tell them hey look and then basically the guy told me he said no 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 he said we have professional gunsmiths that screw up the front sights all the time they'll be using one of these generic front sight pushers the thing is when these go in these generic ones they ride over top of the slide and since they're riding over top of the slide they're pushing on this portion right here and when they push on that portion right there it tends to bend the side over if you're going to use a front sight pusher you need one that's going to actually touch here not here here and they sell them they're really expensive though so but you need one that's going to push right here instead of here to jam it in there and basically they have a video about how you sand the base with this but I, when i was speaking to him in an nra show or nram he said that you can get the diamond files from oh shit uh harbor freight get the files you can also file on the ledge of the site and this if you're having trouble um i kind of probably wish i should have done that on the sig 226 front site because it was really tight but once i got it in there this one wasn't so bad once i got the bottom so that it went in about half well it wasn't even half it was about maybe a third when i got it just a little bit pushed out once it tapped in it tapped in fine so now we will just after cleaning youtube for your stupid guidelines after cleaning you reassemble said gun um, i think we're allowed to show cleaning i do believe so we will just put this back on now now that she's got a new set of sides ooh, them are so much nicer check that out yeah yeah so we'll uh take it outside we'll shoot it get it sighted in see how she is but ooh, pretty happy with the upgraded sights and these are 
height adjustable and you can drift the front sight for you know uh, windage but elevation is on the rear here so looking forward to that and since I got a good deal on her between me and you YouTube I'm right around three in this right now and that's with the sights uh, bought on optics planet I think they were 68 with tax about 75 so that tells you how much I paid for the the lower end you know the poglock uh, we'll take it outside and we'll shoot it so on the last portion see how after I get it sighted in we'll see how she's hitting Alright, so now we'll see how these sights are shooting. I'll sight it in later, but let's see if it improves. I think I can swing it into adjustment. She's shooting more accurate than she was before. Alright, so with the rain, we'll cut it short. See you on the next video.